This episode is brought to you by the Moomoo Investing app. If you want to support the channel and get up to six free stocks, use the link pinned to the top comment. And this is not financial advice. I just hope a bunch of them is, baby, because it's about to get hot in the kitchen. Now, don't invest in companies you don't understand and don't believe in, because if they dip, then you're not going to buy the dip, and then you're going to sell low and be right back here crying to me, and I'm not having that. And if you can't hit through the heat of these hot stocks, then stay out of the kitchen and consider investing in index funds. Now, let's talk about it. Now, this one, remember, don't invest in companies you don't understand and don't believe in. However, what I like to do is trade those companies and make money on a momentum baby now we're going to talk about a penny stock that's a swing trade aka not an investment an investment is something like planting a seed where you plant it and then you water it and you let it grow over time but a trade that means you get in you get up you get out now i'm not telling you to buy hold or sell but this penny stock which we've been talking about for about two weeks now is still on fire but it's dropping and coming back up making it a roller coaster ride aka a swing trade opportunity again i'm not telling you to buy it hold it or sell it i'm gonna give you the facts so then you can be the judge now what are we talking about here we are talking about red box now let's look at it using the Moomoo app like i told you before where you could check the stock and then see the inflow or outflow aka is there a lot of buying happening with this stock or a lot of selling happening with this stock and actually break down and see who's buying and who's selling large institutions or small retail investors and everybody in between let's take a look when you look in the middle of the circle you'll see there's a net outflow on this one meaning this pump that it has is actually dying down short term it could pick back up but at least on friday the large institutions they were trying to get out of it basically the retail investors were trying to get out of it and you look right here i highlighted this in blue just for you even the people in the middle who were buying thousands worth and tens of thousands worth they basically picked up 15 million in this stock but they sold 19 million so there's a net outflow basically everyone has been selling out and taking their profits at least on friday monday's a whole new day now let's look on a level two data which is usually behind the paywall but again you could get it for free on here so i love to see it so it says i highlight this in blue again just for you when you look in this box right here on the left you'll see that there's two orders one of them is 1900 shares about to be purchased and then there's two shares about to be purchased and right under that there's 1800 shares about to be purchased so you're gonna see a little bit of a pump right like right out the gate but notice that this stopped because again it's the weekend we don't have these trades happening because the market is closed but if you were able to see that happening you would see a little bit of a pump and this shows you that oh if you want to get in get up get out and ride the swing trade you can see buyers are rolling in but when you look all the way on the bottom right on the level two data you can see that 3900 shares are about to be sold at what price seven dollars 55 cents so then you would know okay the sell wall is right there so i know i could ride this wave up very briefly make some money and then do what they call either a scalp trade or just a quick in and out trade right now let's look at red box overall remember this is not a play that i'm personally gonna invest in and be holding it long term if i get in i'm getting up and i'm getting out i'm talking quick fast and in a hurry baby i'm not holding on to this because it's just my preference do your own research if you want to hold on to it you know what you be the judge family it makes sense so now red box is up two percent on a day but it gave that back in after hours it's down two percent again then it's up 47 percent on the week however on the year it's down 24 percent which makes a lot of sense but why is this a great swing trade now meaning why are people saying look i'm gonna get in and i'm gonna ride the wave up or ride the put and make money on the way down why are they doing this because i told you before that the short interest was very comparable to gamestop short interest short interest again is when institutions are betting against the company the name just happens to be short interest we're not going to get into the details i talked about it several times before but if you hear short interest think oh this is referring to someone betting against this company now short interest is in a percentage you could bet every share against that same company and then you will get a hundred percent short interest basically we betting totally that all of the shares that exist in the company we betting that all of them is going to zero now in gamestop when it ran up not too long ago right you had it have 140 percent short interest so they were betting more than the shares that actually existed that the company was going to go out of business now there's not 140 percent of the shares that exist there's only 100% of the shares that exist, aka all of the shares that exist. Not all of the shares that exist, plus an extra 40% on the top. That doesn't really add up, right? So now, 
what I want you to see is or text data and they say all the way on the bottom left that there's 156.92% short interest, meaning the short interest is going up, meaning they're betting against it even harder than they were before. Now, remember, Ortex gives you estimated short interest based on exchange data that they get and they receive time and time again. However, we got official reportings that says right up here, I highlight this in blue just for you again, it says it is on the threshold list, right? You get on the threshold list when there are so many failure to delivers for a consecutive amount of time and a failure to deliver means, you know what? We are supposed to, for example, if you buy a share of Redbox, let's call it, and then you see your app, you own a share of Redbox. Boom, you bought it, you own it. What really happens is it takes two days for that to settle and clear and all the paperwork in the background to be done so that share is now within your ownership. But guess what? Sometimes the share won't technically be in your ownership because they couldn't deliver it. They sold you something that they didn't have because remember, there's only 100% of the stock that exists, but they are betting 156% or is it 100? Yeah, 156, I was about to say 152. You know, we keep it real, we keep it raw. Now, they're betting 156% that is gonna exist. And I was talking to my guys the other day. Let's make this very simple. Imagine and let's keep it so simple, right? We're gonna oversimplify it almost, but the principle is the same. Imagine that you have a car and then you sell me your car, right? But you send me a picture of the car and you tell me you're gonna deliver it in two days because you out you out of the state, right? And I'm saying, okay, I, I send you the money, you send me the picture of the car. I got the picture of the car right here, boom. You send someone else a picture of that same car and you sell them the car as well. So now I got a picture of the car, I pay for it. And then they got a picture of the car, they pay for it. You just basically sold two things, but you will not be able to deliver both of them because you do not have two. You are selling things that you do not have. Now, in this case, where we got the 150% short interest, this is, again, I oversimplified it because I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. But remember, when you have one of something, like 100% of something, you can't oversell it or even overshort it because the quantity of that thing does not really exist. And then where they can't deliver. So imagine that I am waiting for the car, the other person is waiting for the car, and we never, we never try to get a refund. We just wait, we just wait for the car, right? We say, I bought it, I want it somebody's gonna get a failure to deliver. And if we keep getting failure to delivers because they keep selling things they do not own, then what's gonna happen is they're gonna end up on what's called the threshold list. So the regulators are supposed to be up on that and making sure that these things do not go on long term. But people are seeing that it got on the threshold list. They're seeing that the short interest, AKA remember, that means they're betting against the company. When you hear short interest, it doesn't mean they're interested for a short amount of time. It means they're betting against the company and they're betting more shares than actually exist now we look at the cost to borrow max i highlight this in blue two on the right and the cost to borrow average notice 670 percent 920 percent these are the interest rates that they have to pay basically to short the shares why are they so high they're so high because again where are they gonna get the shares from right they already got 156 percent short interest where are they gonna get more right how are they getting the interest rate or how are they getting the more shares to borrow and then short into the market. Because when you're shorting it again, you borrow the shares, you pay an interest rate, and then boom, you flood them into the market. And that's why when you see some stocks crashing down and they call it a short attack, right? The short sellers just throw them all in and try to just drag it down. But let's keep it going. Now, for those of you who don't remember, we talked about this one before, and Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment is going to acquire Redbox, right? So they're in the process of that, and that kind of brought them into the spotlight, and that's why everybody kind of just focusing on a little bit. But I want you to remember, Redbox is a penny stock, and it's in the entertainment space, but they're in a space where, and if you don't know what Redbox is, basically, again, I told you before, that it's like a, a, what is it called? I can't remember, it's not coming to me, like a vending machine, right? It's like a vending machine where you put money in, boom, a DVD, a video game, something comes out, but you know how people are streaming nowadays? They're not really doing that. So then this business model, they're gonna have to revamp it or do something in order to make it work, but they're getting acquired. So then let's see what Chicken Soup for the Soul does for them. But either way, I'm not trying to buy that. Just know I was swing traded, but that's it. Now I want you to see this. It's a penny stock because it has a, a market cap. If you add all of the shares up together, they don't add up to a billion. So we're gonna consider that a penny stock because it has a market cap of 300 
349.95 million. But now let's look at this PE ratio, right? The price to earnings ratio is about 88. This is a skill and a tool that I want you to be able to use now, the PE ratio. What you can do is you can compare it to its entire industry, like the entire industry of entertainment, or you can compare it to its immediate peers, right? So for example, if you wanna look and see if Apple has a decent PE ratio, you say, okay, let's compare it to a peer. Let's go look at Microsoft. Let's go look at other kind of tech companies that are big like, like that, right? So you would see, hmm. So if it's making sense, then you say, okay, the P ratio, you will prefer it to be low, right? Not all the way to zero, but you want it to be somewhere, let's call it 25, right? Like in that range is pretty solid, right? It varies depending on the industry. Now, let's keep it going. What I want you to see is this. When we look at the industry valuation and performance of the entertainment industry, the median P E ratio is 23, right? As of Monday, May 16th, 2022, the most recent data we got right here. Now, 23, when we look at the P.E. ratio of Redbox, we see it's at 88. So this means, and I just make P.E. ratio so simple for you, right? Imagine that you're looking at a company. One company has a P.E. ratio of 88. That means you're going to pay basically, and let's keep it super simple. You're going to pay $88, let's say, for them to make $1 right but then let's compare it and again i'm oversimplifying this here let's say that you look at something with a lower p ratio like a p ratio of 25 that means boom you pay 25 dollars for them to go and make that same one dollar so then when you're looking for value like okay how am i going to get the most bang for my buck you're looking for lower p e ratios because then the company earns basically let's call it a dollar right for oversimplification and you get to say okay i want to pay $25 for them to earn a dollar or I want to pay $88 for them to earn a dollar, right? And remember, it's different in different industries and make sure that you're doing your research so you can be up on all this information, but I got your back on that. Now, I want to also comment on something. Now, notice when you go to nasdaq.com, the institutional ownership of Redbox, it says 300%. Now, again, I've said this in the last video, but this be going overhead sometimes, so I'm just going to bring it up again. Whenever you see something like this, you say, whoa, what's going on there? That's weird, right? The short interest is more than it's supposed to be. The institutional ownership is more than it's supposed to be, or supposed to be, excuse me, you know we keep it real, keep it raw. But check it out. What I want you to understand is every time the retail investors are trying to swing trade something, invest in something, the numbers never add up. They never add up. There's always a glitch, and then there's always an excuse for why the glitch exists. But just know, I got your back, and I'm going to keep giving you the facts. But if you can't handle the heat of these hot stocks, then stay out of the kitchen. Consider investing in index funds. Get on the Moomoo app. The link is pinned to the top comment if you want to support the channel and get some free stocks while you're doing that. And I'll see you in the Discord. You already know what time it is. You can learn options and technical analysis. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.